All right. Exponential growth. That? It, the uh, camera follows this around. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. It's not fast enough. And it was too fast. Okay. So, exponentials. We've been doing all linear so far. Now we're going to be doing exponentials, which would be a curve going up or a curve going down. If it goes up like this, this is called exponential growth. If it starts somewhere up here but drops down as you go to the right, it's exponential decay. So, um, exponential growth, something you would use it for in your lifetime is... Uh, investing money or take, getting loans from a bank um, or to figure out the value of objects. They also do uh, exponential decay. Do you know what that's used for? Oh, um, right. Find out how old something is. Okay. So this is, this is the model right here. Y equals C times 1 plus R to the T. Now, there's going to be a number here, there's going to be a number there, and there's going to be a number there. For example, it could be Y equals 2 times 4 to the third. Okay? 2 is the C, the initial amount. This amount right here is the growth factor. And then this is the time period in years. All right? Um, the percent increase is 100 times R. So this amount right here stands for 1 plus R. So what would R actually be in right there? 3. Okay? Because it's 3 more than 1. So the percent is... 100 times 3, that stands for 300%. Okay? So here they have a money problem. You deposit $450, that's the C, the initial amount, in an account that pays 2.5% annual interest, that's the R, compounded yearly. What's the account after 10 years? That's the T. So you just gotta plug those in. Y equals C times one plus the rate. Um, before you put this in, you've gotta change it to a decimal. So that's 0 0.025. So this number in here would be one plus 0 0.025 would be 1.025 raised to the amount of years 10. So it's just uh, using a calculator you need to use this to write the formula and then you just punch it in the calculator. So this would be 576.038 and it goes on and on but this is money they're wondering what's the balance. Everyone know what the word balance means? Yeah. yeah. Oh, total amount. So the balance then you'd have to round this to two decimal places. Five hundred seventy-six dollars and four cents. Okay. Now, when these get combined, next we're doing the decay. Today's the uh, growth. You can tell if it's a growth or decay by that number right there. If it's more than one. That means it's a growth, but if it's less than one, then it's a decay. What if it is one? Uh, then it would just stay still. Nothing would happen to it. Okay. Okay. Population growth. A population of twenty-five mice. So that's your initial amount. So that's C. Then we got to put in one plus the rate. If it doubles each year, what's the percentage then? Two percent. No. 
No, 50% is double. Not quite. 100%. 100 percent. Because if it's 25 the first year and then it doubles, that means it goes up another 25, right? To 50? So this is 100% of that. If something doubles, it's 100%. It goes up 100%. That means it goes up the same amount. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah. So this means it's 100%, which means we move the decimal. That would equal 1. So what number would you put in here? 1, 2. 2, because remember, two. it's always one, 1 plus the rate. Yeah. And then it's raised to the amount of years? 4. So the percent increase each year, we already answered that. It's 100%. And then to figure out the population after four years, it would be 400. Okay, now you could figure that out just doing trial and error. The first year it was 25, the second year it doubles, so it's 50. Third year that doubles, 100. Fourth year, 200. But then, uh, I should have started at, this is at the beginning, I messed up. Zero, and then at one year, two year, three year, four year, then it's 400. Okay. So it's really the two types of problems that we're gonna be doing is money and population. Nice. So Y equals the initial amount, 375, times one plus the rate, the rate is 3%, which you gotta remember to move the decimal. So that's 0 0.03. So what number goes in the parentheses? 1.03. Raised to the 10. So they're really easy. The, the biggest mistake is people forget to move this decimal. So just put that in the calculator, 375 times 1.03 raised to the 10th. Isn't that just 10.3? No. So it's 503.968, which you'd have to round that up to $503.97. This is also a formula that they use to figure out mortgages. You guys all have heard of a mortgage before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, company starts with 20 employees and after one year it has 30. This one has a little extra step in it that you gotta do. So, what is the initial amount? 20. Now, the one plus the rate the rate you gotta figure out. They didn't give us any percentage rate here. We know that it's six years. So, well actually in part A they're asking that. Now this, we haven't done this year. You did a lot of it last year and in seventh grade. To find out the percentage rate, the percent increase. You do have to divide, yep. No. The percent increase. 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 What's the increase? 10. 10. It went from 20 to 30. It's 10. And then you always divide by which number? The original. So someone hollered it out. It is 0.5, which is 50%. Okay. Remember, percent change equals the how much it changes, and then it's always divided by the original amount. So, 50% is 0.5, so what number would you put in there? 1.5. 1 plus R is 1.5. So it'd be 20 times 1.5 raised to the sixth is 
0.8125. Now this type of problem, since it's employees, what would you say the answer would be then? Two. 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 Well, technically you'd have to round this number, so I'd round to 228. But in the context of the problem, can you round someone up? No. No. So 227 would be a correct oh, yeah, answer too. You don't have a full employee. You don't have a full employee, you yeah. Could have a, no. No. You could have a cripple, that'd be happening. Okay. So, my mom's not crippled. Shut up. <laughs> Dude, your mom's not crippled. She's just short. Nick, Nick, Nick. Tell you, Scott. Scott, he's mom. He's got it going on. Oh, you see her. You see every word of her. She's here. 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 Dude, oh, no, it was like my dad. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, for the decay problems, it's, it's really the same formula. The difference is, though, is you don't add the R, you subtract the rate. Because that's how you get a number that's less than one then inside the parenthesis. So depreciation is used. Those are a lot of the problems we do. Um, you guys know what depreciation means? No. Uh, it's like when, an opposite of appreciation. It is. When you buy a car, you guys have heard this before, as soon as you drive a brand new car off the parking lot, it's worth less money. Right? Yeah. 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 It depreciates in value. The longer you have something, the less it's worth. Depreciate means it goes down in value. Unless it's money. So, a car is purchased for twenty thousand. So again, that's the initial amount. So this is going to be y equals twenty thousand times one minus r. The value of the car will be less each year because of depreciation. It depreciates at a rate of 25% per year. So that's 0.25. So we gotta take one minus the rate, 0.75. And then we just raise it to the number of years we wanna figure out. So let's just say after three years, we can figure out what it's worth. So you just take 20,000 times 0.75 raised to the third and <laughs> so after three years, it's only worth $8,437.50. Okay, so here we got a boat, a used boat's 32000 It'll be less each year because of depreciation. It depreciates 13% each year. So the model would be Y equals the initial amount times one minus the rate. So you gotta move the decimal two spots. 13% is 0.13. So one takeaway 0.13 is 0.87 raised to the does it tell us uh, how many years? Oh, right here, three years. The closer this is to one, the less it's gonna lose value. So 3,200 times 0.87 raised to the third is 2107.209, which would run to 21 cents. So I would lose about $1,100 in three years. Jesus. That's not bad. So now, if we were to graph these, you could punch these into the graphing calculator and, and then graph it, and it would show you, like the example up there, a decay is going to go down like that. So all this means at zero years, it's worth 20000 
At two years, it's right there. It looks like about 11,000 something. Four years, it's about 7,000. When you get to 10 years, it's only worth about probably 1,500. Okay. Now the way you would plot these, like if we wanted to do this one, you would have to make a chart and all you gotta do is find a few values. If I plug zero in here, that means you put zero right there. It'd be 3,200 times 0.87 raised to the zero is 3,200. Because anything to the zero is one, right? Mm -hmm. If I put one in there, I get 2,784. Oh. If I put two in, you get 2,422.08. If I put three in, I got that. And if I just jump up to say 10, be $794.95. Now, if I put negative numbers in here, if I put a negative one in, it's going to be worth more than that because you're going back in time. So 3,200 times 0.87 raised to the negative one is $3,678.16, more than what it was when you bought it because it was newer. So if you plotted this, at zero it's at 3,200. So I'll just go by 4,000. So zero, no not four, four hundreds. 3,200. And then in the first year, it was at 2,784. So that would be right about here. Then at the second year, it's at 2,004 right there. So at three years, it's at 2107. So right about there. And then I'll just skip out to 10. At 10, it was 3794. At negative one, it was at 3600. So you can see what's going to happen is this line. It's going to form a curve. It's going to get closer and closer to zero, but will it ever hit zero? No, it'll always be worth a little bit. Just it gets less and less and less the longer you have it. So if you were to graph an exponential growth, the dots, all you got to do is find a few dots to get what the curve is, put a few of the dots on there, and then you can sketch it in. And exponential growth would go up like that. So, Okay, so all of these are exponential 
uh, problems. On some of your stuff, you've got to identify it as a growth or a decay. Hey. So, what can you do to identify if this is a growth or a decay? Uh, Joe. Uh, if the point, or if there isn't a number before the decimal, then it's a decay. If this is greater than one, it's, uh, it goes up. Yeah. So this go, it's 1.6, so that's a growth. What's that? That's less than one, so it's a decay. Decay. Growth. So, other problems, they ask, what is the initial amount? 240. That's just the number in front. 240, 6, 3200, 24. Then, the real easy ones is how many years? Four years, three years, three years, five years. Now, this is the little bit tougher one. They ask for, what's the rate? Since this is 1.6, how much was added to 1? 0.6. So what is that as a rate, though? 60%. 60%. The growths are the easy ones to do. Um, this one, they added 3.3, .3, right? So that as a rate would be 330%. The decays, you got to figure out a little closer. Because at 0.85, you got to figure out what did they subtract from one. What did they subtract from one to get this? Um, 15. 15. So the rate in this one is 15.15, which is 15%. Here, 1 minus R, they subtracted 0.69. So that would be 69% rate of decay. So the decays, you got to remember, it's not this number. It's what they took away from one. All right? So um, tomorrow, I'll just give you your assignment now, but we'll do it in class tomorrow. I oh, might nice. be here. I might not. But either way, if I'm here, we'll do it in class. If not, we'll do it in class. So. Oh, cool. Okay? Nice. So, like, how many things do you do it today? Do it.